DNA can be exchanged among bacteria in three ways conjugation, transformation and transduction. In our previous lecture, we have covered the mechanism of conjugation in which a plasmid or other self-transmissible DNA element can transfer and sometimes other DNA into another bacterial cell. In this lecture, we will discuss transformation in which cells can take off free DNA directly from their environment. Transformation is one of the cornerstones of molecular genetics because it is often the best way to reintroduce experimentally altered DNA that is manipulated DNA into cells. Transformation was first discovered in bacteria but now it has been devised to transform many types of animal and plant cell as well. DNA is derived from a donor bacterium and taken up by a recipient bacterium which is then called a transformant. If the incoming DNA recombines with an indigenous DNA in the cell such as the chromosome, the recombinant types can form. The frequency of recombinant types for various genetic markers can be used for genetic analysis. Most types of cells cannot take off DNA efficiently unless they have been exposed to special chemical or electrical treatments to make them more permeable. However, some types of bacteria are naturally transformable which means they can take up DNA from their environment without any special treatment. Even naturally transformable bacteria are not always capable of taking up DNA but they do so only at certain stage in their life cycle. Bacteria at the stage in which they can take up DNA are said to be competent and bacteria that are naturally capable of reaching this state are said to be naturally competent. At latest count about 40 species have been found to be naturally competent and transformable. Naturally competent transformable bacteria are found in several genera including both gram-positive bacteria such as Bacillus subtilis, Streptococcus pneumoniae and gram-negative bacteria such as Haemophilus influenza, Neisseria gonorrhea, Helicobacter pylori, etc. Now, the transformation was first mechanism of bacterial gene exchange to be discovered. In 1928, Fred Griffith found that one form of pneumococci that is streptococcus pneumoniae could be mysteriously transformed into another form. In his experiment, Griffith mixed dead streptococcus pneumoniae cells that is pathogenic with live non-pathogenic cells and injected the mixture into mice. In this figure you can see that here mice is injected with non-pathogenic strains and the mouse is healthy. Here the mouse is injected with live pathogenic strain. The mice is result is mice dead. In this figure mice is injected with heat killed pathogenic pneumococci strain. Mouse is also healthy. But here mice given injection 
of mixture of non pathogenic strain plus heat killed pathogenic strain the result is bacteria uh, sorry mouse is mouse dies furthermore griffith isolated live pathogenic bacteria from the blood of the dead mice therefore he speculated that the dead pathogenic bacteria gave off a transforming principles that changed the live non pathogenic bacteria into the pathogenic bacteria then about after 16 years oswald avery and his collaborator came up with the transforming principle and showed that it is dna thus avery and his colleagues were the first to demonstrate that dna is the hereditary material and fred griffith discovered this phenomenon of bacterial gene transfer now generally more than a dozen of genes are involved including both regulatory and structural components of the transformation process this are the schematic diagram of DNA uptake competence system in gram negative bacteria and gram positive bacteria and uh, we actually discuss about the general steps and we are not going through the details of genetic uh, approaches so the general steps that are involved in natural transformation differ somewhat depending on whether the bacteria are gram positive or gram negative if they are gram positive uh, gram negative bacteria the steps are binding of double stranded dna to the outer cell surface of the bacterium then movement of the dna across the cell wall and outer membrane then degradation of one of the dna strands and the trans location of the remaining single strand DNA into the cytoplasm of the cell across the inner membrane. Once in the cell, the cell strand of transforming DNA might synthesize the complementary strand and re-establish itself as a plasmid or stably integrate into the chromosome by homologous recombination or be degraded. In a gram-positive organism, that lacks an outer membrane this outer membrane is lacks here and the process is similar except that movement through the outer membrane in the first step double stranded dna released by the lysis of the donor bacteria is bound to specific receptors on the cell surface of the recipient bacterium then bound dna is broken into smaller pieces by endonucleases then fragmented dna translocated across the cell wall by specific translocator protein next one of the two complementary strand is degraded by an exonuclease and the remaining strand is transported into the cell by atp binding cassette transporter protein family and the single stranded dna is being protected by dna binding protein the transforming dna integrates into the cellular dna in a homologous region by strand displacement a mechanism in which the new strand invades the double helix and displaces an old strand with the same sequence the old strand is then degraded if the donor DNA and recipient DNA sequences differ slightly in this region, recombinant types can appear. The basic scheme described so far probably differs among different types of 
naturally occurring competent bacteria. For example, Haemophilus influenza may first take up double-stranded DNA in a subcellular compartments called transformism. See this picture. The new DNA may not become single-stranded until it enters the cytoplasm. This is the transformism, contains DNA from one cell and now it is fused with the another cell and when it releases its containing DNA into the cytoplasm, this is single-stranded form. However, the basic process of all natural transformation is the same, only one strand of the DNA enters in the interior of the cell and integrates with the cellular DNA to produce recombinants. Some types of bacteria take up DNA from only their own species such as Neisseria gonorrhea, Haemophilus influenzae, whereas others can take up DNA from any source. Most types of bacteria are not naturally transformable. These bacteria do not take up DNA from the environment. However, even this bacteria can sometimes be made competent by certain chemical treatments or DNA can be forced into them by a strong electric field in a process that is called electroporation. In contrast to the naturally occurring competent cells, cells made permeable to DNA by calcium ion treatment will take up both single-stranded and double-stranded DNA. Therefore, both linear and double-stranded circular plasmid DNA can be efficiently introduced into chemically treated cells. This is very useful for cloning and other applications that require the introduction of plasmid and phage DNA into cells. Now, this is the summary of the total transformation process. In transformation, DNA is taken up directly by cells. Bacteria that are capable of taking up DNA are said to be competent. Some types of bacteria can take up DNA naturally during part of their life cycle. During natural transformation, During natural transformation, double-stranded DNA first bind to the cell surface and then is broken into smaller pieces by endonucleases. Then one strand of the DNA is degraded by an exonuclease. The single-stranded DNA then invades the chromosome. By an exonuclease, the single-stranded DNA then invade the chromosome in homologous regions, displacing one strand of the chromosome at these sites. Naturally competent cells usually not transformed with circular plasmid or phage DNA. Sometimes of Haemophilus influenza, Neisseria gonorrhea, take up DNA of only the same species. Most types of bacteria can take up plasmid or phage DNA only after chemical treatment. If the cell is transformed with the viral DNA to initiate an infection, the process is called transfection. And brief exposure of cells to an electric field also allows them to take up DNA as a process called electric. <laughs>